Hey there, my name is Joshua Grainer, and I'm a men's health and performance specialist. And I just posted an article online that I wrote about how cannabis affects testosterone levels in men. And it's created quite the lively discussion. So I just wanted to make a quick video that summarizes and clarifies some of the key points and provides a venue and opportunity to liven up that conversation even more. Um, so the con the relationship between cannabis use and male sexual health and performance is is rife with controversy. There's a lot of contradicting information, both in the in the popular health media, but also in the research. So my goal with this short video is to bring in some research and to try this try to make this topic a little clearer and to give you a framework for understanding how cannabis fits into your overall health and performance strategy if that's an herb or medicine that you want to use. Um, so I, I'll, uh, I'll put the, uh, the, the link to the original uh, post in the uh, discussion below. And uh, also, if this is interesting to you, if you like topics like this about men's health and performance, consider subscribing to this channel. And you can sign up for my weekly newsletter where I share tools and strategies for guys 40 and over who are looking to optimize their health and performance. Okay, so first, it's important to point out that even in the scientific research, there are a lot of contradictory data. There's a lot of contradictory results. Um, I've read about uh, 10 to 12 uh, studies, and it's clear to me that there are a lot of variations in the study design, inclusion criteria, a bunch of different things. But there are also a couple of things that are very clear to me, and it is that cannabis use does seem to impact hormone balance and sperm quality in men. So then the big question is, how exactly does using cannabis affect things like testosterone or sperm count? And the short answer is that it's complicated. And the exact effect and mechanisms by which cannabis use affects male virility and fertility, they're still poorly understood. But a couple of things really stand out. And this is what I outlined in the article. So first, using cannabis more than once per week is associated with a 30% reduction in testosterone levels in men, as well as a 29% reduction in sperm count. Now, there's a lot of different things related to this specific article, which again, you can access that resource uh, and that reference in the original article that I wrote. Um, but they did account for some other things that can reduce testosterone levels, things like alcohol, things like smoking status, things like um, body mass index and things like that. So this study, which was done with about 1,200 participants, does seem to have some statistical significance and some power behind it. And this is the main article that I used to create the, the article that I wrote. Um, and then diving a little bit deeper into the research, uh, cannabis reduces testosterone levels for 24 hours post-ingestion. The testosterone lowering, lowering effects of cannabis happens regardless of the ingestion method. So whether it's smoked, whether it's ingested orally eaten, and in the case of uh, at least one research um, uh, study, they did it uh, intravenously. So the effects of THC of, of, of the of the chemical within cannabis that reduces testosterone, it was regardless of whether it was smoked, eaten, or uh, IV. Um, the other thing is, is that cannabis use increases the hormone prolactin, which drives down both testosterone and dopamine levels in men. And abnormally high prolactin levels in men is associated with depressed mood and low motivation. Cannabis increases the production of SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin, which is a, a protein that binds to testosterone that when sex hormone, sex hormone binding globulin, <laughs> sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG is bound to testosterone. It makes that testosterone essentially unusable. So this is where you would see the, the variations between total testosterone and free testosterone. Free testosterone means that it's unbound to a protein like SHBG or a different type of protein called albumin. When that testosterone is free and usable, it, is, it, can, it, it will uh, have an effect on the cell and all the, all the potential benefits that we associate with testosterone, 
it comes from the free testosterone, not necessarily the total testosterone. It gets a little bit more nuanced, but just to, to do a, a, you know, go into that just a little bit. Um, THC, um, tetrahydrocannabidiol is the main chemical associated with the observed hormonal imbalances in men and users. And as of now, as, as, at least as, as, as far as what I've read, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that other cannabinoids, things like CBD, cannabidiol, CBG, cannabigerol, or CBN, which is, yeah, I can't remember what that one is, but anyways, other cannabinoids, they don't have the same consequences for testosterone and sperm count that THC does. And uh, one article in particular from the Journal of Urology um, suggested that widespread regular cannabis use is one of the proposed reasons for the abnormal decline in testosterone for young men in the U.S. and Canada. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. The good news is, is that the observed reduction in testosterone and sperm count associated with THC use um, was, um, it was observed to be reversed after only six days of abstinence. So reductions in testosterone, reductions in sperm count, those things are reversible. And it was seen that if somebody abstained from using THC cannabis for longer than six days or six days or longer, that those levels were reversible. So then the big question is, is why is any of this important? First, testosterone is critical for male hormonal health. It's critical for health in general, for especially for men. It affects our heart health, our body composition, musculoskeletal health, mental health, motivation, relationships, and a lot of things. So it's important to safeguard a testosterone by doing those things that naturally increase it, like strength training, stress management, good sleep, stuff like that, and avoid or limit all the things that reduce it. And this is especially important in our adolescent years. So for our children, for our male children, while they're still developing. And that's also really important after, we, after we're 40 years old, when our testosterone levels have already declined by as much as 20%. In addition to the natural decline in testosterone that happens as we age, recent evidence shows an abnormal decline in testosterone levels in men, even young men over the past 20 years. This is really scary. Basically, um, this is this uh, this article is also linked in the, uh, in the in the article that I wrote. Basically, what this what this is saying is over the past twenty years, researchers have observed a decline in baseline testosterone levels in adolescents, in all men, but especially adolescents, and that's really problematic because when we're you know between the ages of 14 and 24 years old, that is basically when our testosterone level should be the highest. And that's when the testosterone is necessary for brain developments, continued brain, brain development, cognitive developments, emotional development, mental development, physical developments of our bones, of our muscles, everything. And if we're seeing across the board in the United States, a steady decline in testosterone that is, uh, it's a very concerning, it's, it's, a, it's a very problematic statistic. And it's really important, I think, to do what we can to get to the bottom of it. Now, looking through the, through the, through the research, there is, there are a lot of reasons, suggested reasons for this. Environmental toxicology being one, stress being another, with sleep issues being another one. But this, the, um, the cannabis issue is definitely one of the ones that's top of the list. So, Again, why is it important to keep our testosterone levels healthy? We want to set up our young men for success by supporting their physical, mental, and emotional development. Birth rates are also declining in the United States, partially related to demographic changes, but also in part due to dropping fertility levels in both men and women. So a country with a rapidly aging population, so like in the U.S., we have the baby boomers rapidly aging, rapidly retiring, and Couple that with a very low birth rate, like in the millennials, um, that country, the United States, is going to have a lot of problems economically in the future. So I'll actually link a discussion by a, um, uh, a global, um, what does he even refer to himself? Um, Peter Zion. He's a, he's, a, he's a global strategist, um, a geopolitical strategist. Um, and he's got a lot to say about this declining birth rate that I think is really interesting. But bringing it back to the testosterone, we need to maintain the highest natural levels of testosterone as we can to keep us healthy as we age. 
there is a time and place for testosterone supplements and even testosterone replacement therapy, but those don't really address the underlying reasons that a man may have lower than optimal testosterone. So when we're thinking about our strategy, when we're thinking about our tactics, how we want to, to, to age gracefully and maintain as much virility and strength and you know be as healthy as we possibly can as we age, it's important to, to, to look at the different things that we're doing in our life and ask ourselves, you know, looking through the lens of something like testosterone, are the things that I'm doing in my life or not doing in my life, how are they affecting my testosterone levels? So in conclusion, here's a way to think about cannabis use. If you're using it recreationally, well, this, I'm not giving you advice, right? This, 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 this is just me talking about stuff. <laughs> so, you know, take it, take it or leave it. But if a person is using this recreationally, the best is to use it less than once per week, right? So that ends up being, you know, four times, four times per month, three times per month. If you've got, if you've got something coming up that requires a, a lot of focus, concentration, mental, physical energy, something that's can put a lot of stress on the body, like you're going to be traveling a lot, or you've got a big presentation, or you're, you're going to be in, doing a, an athletic event, like a marathon, a triathlon, something, right? Allow 24 to 48 hours between the last time that you ingest cannabis and the event. If a person is using it medically for pain, anxiety, et cetera, the question to ask, and this is the question with any type of medication that's or, or herb or whatever you're taking to offset the effects of, of pain and anxiety and, and maybe sleeplessness, is what is the lowest dose and frequency I can use to get a positive effect? And then on top of that, make sure that you're pursuing other habits that boost testosterone, things like strength training, ensuring that, that you've got good sleep hygiene habits and that you're managing your stress appropriately. And, you know, as always, if you have any questions about whether or not anything that you're doing is affecting your health, your physiology, and in this case, your testosterone, don't gas assess, right? You can order for yourself or you can have your physician order for you. Um, a very basic testosterone test. And I would suggest the industry standard is a blood test. There are urine tests you can do, there are saliva tests, but in my uh, experience, those haven't been, uh, th th those don't seem to be as accurate or consistent as a blood test. So um, if you're going to do it, uh, if you're going to have your blood drawn and measure your testosterone, be sure to measure at a minimum total testosterone, free testosterone, and SHBG. Then if the levels are out of optimum range, then alter your behavior, whatever that behavior is, whether it's, it's uh, you know, cannabis use or smoking or um, exercise or, you know, whatever that thing is that you're thinking that, oh, this might be interfering with my testosterone levels. Alter that, change that behavior, and then test again in four to six weeks. The important thing is just to make sure that that you get your blood drawn at the same time. So if you get your blood drawn, the you know, for the first assay at, you know, 10 a.m. on a Friday, then make sure that four to six, le four to six weeks level that you get your blood drawn at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on a Friday. Right. So and the other thing that's really important is to make sure that you get it drawn by the same lab. So if, you know, so you get it done, you get it drawn and sent to LabCorp and the, the first time, and the next time you get it drawn and, and sent to Quest Diagnostics or one of the other labs, there will be some inconsistencies between the labs. So to, to, to make it as consistent as important, because in this case, really reliability is more important than precision. So in this case, make sure that you're getting it drawn at the same time of the week, same time of the day, and by the same lab. Okay, so I invite any comments in the comment section below. And again, if you're interested in any of these things that I'm talking about, if you're interested in increasing and or, or optimizing your health, optimizing your performance, go, go ahead and click on the link in the description. It'll take you to my website. You can sign up for the newsletter. And each week you'll get a couple of quotes from people that I really, I think they got good things to say. You'll get some uh, some articles, some videos about exercise, about uh, rehabilitation, prehabilitation, basically anything related to men's health, fitness, and performance. Okay, Joshua Grainer, 
I'll see you next time.